speaking about happiness, um, when you built your first group, after you built your first group and it was success, what were your exact thoughts? Like, you know you built a drone, now, you know it's flying. There's that inner happiness or that I have achieved something. It may be small, but I have achieved something is a thought you get. So what was that happiness like for you? Uh, happiness is like, you know, whatever you will interest, for example, what do you like? You should have asked like, what do you like? What's your area of interest? Uh, dance. Dance, right? Whenever you, you know you play some loud music and dance for that tune, you know, you feel like you know you're all positive, uh, uh, you know, uh, souls going to happen, you know, active. Like the whenever it comes to flying things, whenever I go near airport, in the initial days I'm docking. So whenever I go near airport or anything, if something is flying above me, helicopter or anything. It's like, you know, wow, you know, I was just kept on looking at it. You know, uh, my village is very near to Bang, it's like 800 kilometers from there. You know? So usually there is a, there's a flight coming from Madras to Bangalore airport, former HL airport. The blinking thing, you know, it blinks from this side, to this, this side, on the wings. So I always look into that. Oh, flight is going over there. I always look since from start me till the end week, till my eyesight, I used to watch it. It's all about interest, man. Like not only that, I used to have a telescope. I was I always used to observe uh, the moment of Jupiter, the Venus, etc. etc. If it is visible. Uh, now so many advanced telescope telescopes have came into the market. Um speaking about your interest in space, what is your favorite discovery or any moment you have watched in space which is which will let you in surprise? Ah, uh, that uh, that Elon Musk uh, did that uh, reusable rockets. I was like, wow! Is yes. uh, you know the NASA with so much of investment, government back backing, you know, uh, they're not able to do it for so many years. It comes from a you know, it's a private space agency. He done it like this, and the space tool thing, space tool. You know, people, you know, the rich, rich people, they explore all over the group. You know, if some these people sitting together in a room, they always talk about, I flew in a Earth France first class flight, and I flew in a, I took a British Airways first class flight, etc., etc., they talk about. They want to talk something else. Now. I went for Mars for tour, I went there for tour, you know, they are making money, the idea is cool, you know, the space tour concept and also that reusable rocket. When the reusable, you know, rocket, it, how many times he got failed? The criticism that is faced from the people like uh, Neil Armstrong and all. So he faced the criticism. Still, he is he can able to do it. He can able to achieve it. despite all this political use in law. As a technology guy, as an engineer, as a scientist, I appreciate him. I admire him. Uh, uh, it left you know the whatever the, the guy does. You know, it left me in a speechless mode. And also the Jack, you can say. Um, uh, when he uh, gathered all his employees and some people and he himself became a rock star and playing some guitar and uh, singing some songs and all. Oh, he's a CEO of Alibaba. He's like, hey, how can he be able to you know, do all this stuff? You know? Those are all Um Speaking about AI, we all know AI is taking over the world. It's actually is coming in, robots coming in. There are a lot of products, a lot of our jobs right now is being done by AI in a lot of sectors. Well, what do you think is the future of AI in drone or what is the integration of AI with drones and how will it impact the human life further on? As of now, as of now, robots, AI, whatever you're talking, they are not that much intelligence as a human. But one day, one day will come. They can take over humans. Probably they can rule us also. Who knows? Uh, that's the you know biggest nightmare for me. Uh, you know, of course, I'm uh, late later now. Uh, probably I will live up to another 50 years or 60, 70, 80 years. Of course, I'm going to witness it. Uh, I'm very much curious about it. Uh, but uh, for me, it's like you know, you all there is a always limit for technology. Once you're crossing, you know. I think this thing's going to happen, yeah. You know, what role do you think uh, technology plays in, of course, as we all know, there's a gap between the urban life and the rural life. 
What do you think? How does technology help build that gap, or how can we build that gap between the urban life, or urban life, and the rural life, or what's technology? Trust me. Uh, now, uh, uh, you know, in my village particularly, people are not giving their girls for allowance to get married. Even though he drives a cab in Bangalore, even though he's a Srinagar, the father is not ready to give the daughter to him. He drives a small cab in Bangalore, he's ready to give the daughter to him because he lives in Bangalore. It's changing, it's changing. But still, some people are there who preserve our culture, the things, you know, of our fathers or bring till now. But I don't know where we are heading towards, but uh, we need to preserve our culture as a technology move forward, especially in the rural areas. Uh, the things we follow from uh, from our forefathers. You know, it's all about, you know, of course, uh, we dress like Western people, we adopted their culture, and we are wearing the shirt, we are wearing, we are used to wear lungi, now we are wearing pants and all. Yeah, of course, but we need to adopt the same thing when it comes to technology. Look, for example, China, they got deep sick. Look, for example, the US, they got open air. Like that, we need to do something in our country too. I always feel like that. 